in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome you to our Perseverance family. And as always, we want to invite the Blessed Mother to be with us. Mary is the Mother of God. Mary is the Mother of the Church. And Mary is the Mother of each and every one of us. She's also, Mary is our life our sweetness, and our hope. So let's consecrate ourselves to our Lord through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. As we say the prayer that Mary loves most, and that is, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Let's invite our spiritual guide to be with us, our teacher, our master to be with us. And our teacher, our spiritual guide is, he is the Holy Spirit. Various titles are given to the Holy Spirit. He's known as the Consoler, the Counselor, the Gift of Gifts. He's also known as the finger of God. He's known as the interior master. He's also known as the sanctifier. He who makes us holy. The interior master, St. Paul says, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say, Abba, Father. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is also the sweet guest of the soul. Lifting up our minds, our hearts, and our souls to God in, in song, let's invite the Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us a lot of light, a lot of peace, a lot of joy, and a lot of strength as we sing. Spirit of the living God, Full afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Now in us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, Fall afresh on us. Melt us. Mold us. Fill us. Use us. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us. Fall afresh on us. <clears throat> Fall afresh on us. Our Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael, St. Raphael, and St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Faustino, pray for us. St. Ignatius Loyola, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Before we enter into our topic, I'd like to talk about 
what we're trying to do during the pandemic to give you some pra practical pastoral guidelines as well as some encouragement. And it's this. We're trying to give you as much as we can online as well as pastorally through the sacraments. So, every day, and you are in the area you're invited to come, if not you who are online, there's two ways in which we're trying to really communicate the Word of God and to allow to flow the grace of God. One would be through the talks we give online, the prayer activities we have online. The second would be by means of the actual pastoral activities and sacraments that we're celebrating. So, that being the case, every day, and you're invited, we have Mass at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. We have the Mass in the parking lot because of the pandemic and the order of the bishop and the governor. The Masses have to be celebrated in a an open-air place, and that's what we've been doing. We set up about 10 tents. We got chairs. We have social distancing. It's really well organized. So I invite you to come to one of those masses on a daily basis. And you can come, of course, on Sunday. In addition to that, we've already started First Communion Masses. So instead of having really uh, big-sized Masses with many children, yesterday we had a Mass with about four, and then another Mass with about six children. So we're going from about four all the way to about 20, so that within about six weeks, we hope to have all the children that, when the second year of their catechism classes, they will have made their first communions. In addition to that, we also are available for the sacrament of confession. I know by listening and talking to other people about other areas because of the situation, most uh, churches or parishes do not have confession available yet. But for the past six weeks, I have been hearing confessions in the parking lot at 11 in the morning until 1 o'clock, those two hours. And from 5 o'clock until 7 o'clock. It's well organized. We've got the ushers and the servants that have a tent, a couple of tents where you simply have to wait online. And there is social distancing of about six feet in between each one, each one of you. We give you a, an examination of conscience pamphlet in English or Spanish, whatever language you prefer. And I confess, and I confess pretty quickly, a lot of people are coming. I'd say in each session from the two hours, probably about 40 people are confessed, so 80 altogether. I move at a pretty quick pace, but a lot of people are coming, but you can come also. We'll be talking about that in our in our gospel today, which is related to weeding, weeding out the weeds from the garden. Then in addition to that, starting today, we actually started last night, we're going to be adding something more to our program. And I think you're really going to like this. We as priests, we, we know 
the the great importance of love for the Eucharist. The great importance of love for the Eucharist. So right now, I finished my holy hour with Father Craig, and he's going out to the parking lot with the monstrance with the Blessed Sacrament so that there will be adoration of the Blessed Sacrament from 7.30 up until 8 o'clock. Then at 11 o'clock, right before I hear confessions, I will be exposing the Blessed Sacrament in the out, outdoor altar for two hours, I'm sorry, one hour, from 11 to 12, and then from 5 to 6. So once again, we're going back to Eucharistic adoration, half hour before the 8 o'clock Mass, an hour before the 12 o'clock Mass, and an hour before the 6 o'clock Mass. So we expose the Blessed Sacrament in the, in the monstrance, so that you have an opportunity, you have an opportunity to adore and worship the Blessed Sacrament. We're trying with great effort to offer you as much as we possibly can. Now, many of you on in our Perseverance family are out of state, maybe not even in the country. I would just like to go through the various programs that we offer to you online. To kick off 7.30, the family meeting that we have every day at 7.30 is basically focused upon helping you to get to know better the Word of God, which I try to explain the first reading of the Gospel of the day. Then after I finish, you have posted on Facebook as well as my website, you've got points for meditation. you got about two pages of wonderful points that Mary Martirana has been working on helping me to enrich our Perseverance program. Invite other people to come. Share this with your friends. So this is this is what we're doing. Then I'll explain if there's a saint for the day. Then I try to go through, at least briefly, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. We've arrived already at number 56 in the Cate Catechism of the Catholic Church. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to prepare your, you for your holy hour. So you can have a really powerful experience with the Lord in your holy hour today. And then we want to insist upon getting to know the saints because the saints are those who have really lived out. They've lived out. The Word of God. And we're called to live out the Word of God like them. And we give you, as we said, a number from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The reason being is, as adults, it's incumbent upon us to keep growing in our Catholic faith. I've made this comment before, and I'll repeat it again. I think over the past 50 years, one of the biggest pastoral flaws has been that we have dedicated time and energy to prepare the little children for First Communion. We have dedicated time and energy to prepare the confirmation kids for their confirmation. However, generally as a rule, we've neglected one of the most important groups of people to educate in the faith. And that would be the adults. So over the past 20 years in the parish here, those children that come in, the adults that come in, we give them adult formation classes. And I dedicate, 
I've dedicated many, many hours over the past close to 20 years in giving formation classes for the parents of the First Communion children, as well as the confirmation parents. And I love it. I love teaching. I love teaching, especially the adults. So in a certain sense, what I'm doing with, with all of you, and you might be a more highly educated group than the parents of the First Communion kids and confirmation kids, but still, we still have to get to know our faith better. Uh, this is one of the this is one of the most important books or texts in the in the in the Catholic Church. It's the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and um, it is the second universal catechism in two thousand years. Okay, so today in number fifty six mentions the person of Noah. Noah lived in a time where there was a lot of evil. God told Noah to build an ark. Noah entered in the ark with his ch with his children and his wife. God sent down a deluge, destroying all the people. All those who were in the ark were saved. The ark of Noah is symbolic of the church, and the ark of Noah is symbolic of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We want to seek refuge in the church which is the mystical body of Christ. We want to seek refuge in the Blessed Virgin Mary, too. So that's number 56 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church that speaks today about the person of Noah and what happened in the book of Genesis. There was deprivation and God sent a chastisement. So let's go back to our, our, our programs. So we mentioned the masses and the confession in the parking lot. Online, we offer you this program, invite you to come, and tune in live at 7.30. If you're too busy, you can go back into the archives and you can listen to this program again. And all of this is gratis, free of charge, how good God is. All of this is free of charge. And the only thing you ask is pray for me, and I'll pray for you, as I do. I place you on the altar of my masses that God will give you many graces. Then at 9 o'clock, I give another perseverance class. Then I give it in Spanish. And often it's the main, basically the same theme, but I'll, I'll change some ideas. Then you have posted the readings for the day that you can do either that or you can do the readings of the day from a Magnificat. This is uh, what I suggest or your your daily Roman Missal. Then what we have is at 10 o'clock in the morning I celebrate the first online Mass knowing that Still many people can't make it to church. So I have my technological experts that are able to transmit live for you people the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Now it's not the same thing as going to Mass in person, but God understands. If you can't make it to Mass because of many, many reasons, justifiable reasons, try to follow the Mass online. And we mentioned this year, uh, uh, er, earlier on during the pandemic, try to make a spiritual communion. Try to make a spiritual communion. You can make as many spiritual communions as you like. But a prime time to make a spiritual communion would be during the context of the Mass. Most specifically, when I'm receiving Holy Communion, sacramentally, you make a spiritual communion. As such, Lord, I believe that you're truly present in the Blessed Sacrament, in your body, blood, soul, and divinity. I cannot receive you now sacramentally, but I want you, I receive you spiritually into my soul. I love you, I adore you, I worship you. 
so the Lord Jesus Christ enters into your heart spiritually and he will communicate to you many graces. So there at 10 o'clock, we have the online Mass. Then I go outside and I expose the Blessed Sacrament at 11 o'clock. From 11 to 1, you have confessions. Going back to online. At 2 o'clock, over the past three months, I initiated a new program. And this is called the Ignatian Forum. Given that our charism is Ignatian, and we're striving to promote Marian devotion as Oblates of the Virgin Mary. However, we're trying also to promote Ignatian spirituality. I have formed a forum. And it's a group of three of us, myself, Eric, and Mary. And we, are, we, we, we invite guests. Yesterday we had Father Craig. Today we're going to have Father Larry. Wednesday we'll have my younger brother Jim again. He was on about six weeks ago. He'll be coming back again. And the following week I'll have my younger sister, Mary, who will probably be talking about natural family planning. She's a mother of eight children in New Hampshire. So I'm trying to enrich this uh, program by inviting guests to be with us in person or we'll, we'll make a phone call to New Hampshire or Florida, wherever they might be. And people are really getting a lot out of this forum, what they're telling me. So this is at 2 o'clock. The forum lasts an hour. So if you can, tune in to our forum. We invite you to get to know Ignatian spirituality. Yesterday we had a very lively conversation on, in which I asked Father Craig, Mary, as well as her, what is your favorite biblical passage? And what is your favorite biblical chapter? We had a lively discussion on our favorite chapter and our favorite verse. We're going to follow up on that today with Father Larry. What is your favorite Bible passage? Your favorite chapter. What is your favorite Bible passage? What is your favorite Bible chapter? So we're really working very hard to promote formation, promote Ignatian spirituality, promote Marian devotion, give you access to preaching, give you access to live Masses as well as actual Masses, virtual as well as live Masses. Then, at 3 p.m., right after the Ignatian Forum, we have, at 3 p.m., which is the Mercy Hour, we pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Hopefully you can... Uh, Tune into this. Then at the end of it, we'll read a number or a paragraph from the Diary of St. Faustina, and I'll usually give a one to two minute short explanation of the meaning of the short passage of the Diary of St. Faustina, which is a spiritual gold mine. Then at four o'clock, I have my second online Mass. The first online Mass at 10 o'clock is in English. The second online Mass is in Spanish. So we're trying to accommodate you to what is your preference. Because many people, especially in California, their first language is Spanish, so we try to adapt to the pastoral cultural needs of our people. By the way, at, the, at that Mass and the 10 o'clock Mass, after communion, I'll usually give about 10 minutes of silent adoration in which I expose the Blessed Sacrament on the altar so you can do your Eucharistic adoration online and make your thanksgiving for your spiritual communion. Now, 
At 7.30, uh, then at 5, I go to expose the Blessed Sacrament and hear confessions, and there's a 6 o'clock Mass in the parking lot. Once again, we've got First Communions again today. Then at 7.30, I pray the family rosary. The family that prays together stays together. And the, what I do is uh, it takes about a half an hour. I'll take one of the mis I'll take the five mysteries and I'll show a beautiful artistic depiction of it. I'll explain it. Then we end with song. Then finally, the last activity we have online every day is the Holy Hour with the Oblate Fathers. It's a beautiful, beautiful way to end the day. And what we do is we, we talk about a mm -hmm. spiritual topic. For example, yesterday, Father Craig talked about the scapular. He's given the scapulars. He's telling the people to buy their children a scapular after they make First Communion. And he spoke about the scapular, the origin, and a couple of miracles among many that are attributed to those who wear the scapular with faith. The scapular is the external sign of our consecration to Mary. Then we expose the Blessed Sacrament. And Father Craig, he leads the rosary by explaining the rosary, very often connected to the topic that has been delivered. Then we pray the chop of divine mercy. We make a spiritual communion with the Blessed Sacrament exposed. Then we have five to ten minutes of silent adoration. And then we give you a blessing, the benediction. So we have all those activities online on my Facebook page. 730 Perseverance Talk. English. 9 o'clock Perseverance Talk. Spanish. 10 o'clock. All this is online. 10 o'clock Mass. 2 o'clock Ignatian Forum. 3 o'clock Chapa Divine Mercy. 4 o'clock Mass in Spanish. 730 The Daily Family Rosary. 8.30, the oblate hour of power, the holy hour. So we're trying to form a virtual family with you, as well as a church family for those who can come. Because even though there's the pandemic, for those who love God, all things work together for the good. As St. Paul says, for those who love God, all things work for, together for the good. So take advantage of all these opportunities. Some people are complaining about, about the pandemic and falling into discouragement. Others say it's a blessing because they say it's a blessing because it's been an opportunity because of the enclosure to pray more, to meditate more to bond with your family members, to reflect more, to, th to reflect more upon the reality of our lives, why we're really here. So I thought that uh, now and then I will spend a little time in our perseverance uh, conversation just to, to brief you as to where, we're, where we are with respect to the sacramental practice now in the parking lot and to remind you of the many online activities that our online family has. So invite you to bring other people, share our program to others so that we can preach the word of God to the whole world. Amen. So that's, uh, that's a good, Brief summary of uh, where we're at, where we're at right now in this pandemic. Okay, what I'd like to do today is, before getting into the Word of God, which is always rich, very rich, 
is I'm going to tell you today in the the, the church calendar not it's not an obligatory memorial I'll tell you about an American blessed he's actually the first male American-born martyr in the Catholic Church in the States so I'd like to t just briefly tell you about this saint and pray to him then we'll go into the Word of God today we celebrate blessed Stanley Rother I repeat Blessed Stanley Rother, R-O-T-H-E-R. -E Most of you have probably never heard of him, but Pope Francis beatified him, which means after he died, already two miracles have been attributed to him. Okay, who was this blessed Stanley Rother? He was born in 1935, born in the state of Oklahoma. His parents were farmers, like Father Dave. They tilled the land of Oklahoma. He was born around the time of the Cristeros, a little bit after. He felt called to become a priest. So he studied in the seminary and was ordained a priest. Now in Oklahoma, the diocese, diocese said any of the priests that would like to go on mission, to be a missionary priest to another country that they were, were given permission by the bishop to do that. Stanley volunteered and he was sent to the country of Guatemala. Guatemala. So he was there, he learned the language, and he became a pastor of one of the rural parishes in Guatemala. And he loved the people very much. And what he did was two things. He dedicated himself to his pastoral ministry, saying mass, baptizing, hearing confessions. In other words, the normal process of what a parish priest would do all over the world. However, he's very interested in human formation and helping the poor people. So given that he knew back then the modern techniques of farming, of agricolo, of agriculture, he wanted to transfer to Guatemala some of the more modern techniques on how to farm so that the poor people we we'll learn to farm and, uh, of course, be able to provide for their families. So he was there working for about 13 years. The Guatemalan Revolution broke out. This was in the, uh, the 80s, the early 80s. He came back to the United States to visit his parents. And his relatives. They suggest that he do not go back to Guatemala because of the tense situation. Father Stanley said, the pastor should not abandon his flock when he senses danger, but the pastor has to be with his flock when the wolves come. So Stanley returned to Guatemala and the revolutionaries, they surrounded his house. 
they entered into his house, three of them, and they fought with him. And then they ended up by killing him. He died as a martyr. So he's actually the first American male to be born in the United States that's a martyr. I say the first American male because you had martyrs in the United States, in Upper State New York, Isaac Jokes, John Brabuff, Rene Goupil, Noel Charbel. These are the Jesuit North American martyrs that were killed, martyred by the Iroquois, but they were born in France, but they shed their blood in the United States. Shortly after that came St. Kateri Tekawita. So let's, uh, let's pray to this saint that we would be really love God, love our flocks. Let's pray for the, let's pray also for the gift of fortitude to be willing to suffer for Christ. But also let's pray for those who are persecuted that they would be firm in their faith, knowing that the blood of martyrs is the seed for Christian growth. I'd like to move into the readings today, and for the first reading, I'd like to read one verse and comment upon that. We're reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14. Let's listen to the word of God. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest. I'd like to make a parallel between that verse and one of the Beatitudes. We have the eight Beatitudes that we went through about six weeks ago. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 12, one of the Beatitudes is, Blessed are those who mourn, or blessed are those who weep. They will be consoled. Jesus, we have Jesus weeping three times in the gospel. He weeps at the death of his friend Lazarus, John chapter 11. Jesus weeps over the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather you as a hen? gathers her chicks, but you would not have me. And then lastly, he says that Jesus offered tears and loud cries in the garden, and he was heard. This we read in the book of Hebrews. What does this mean? What does this mean? Blessed are those who weep. They will be consoled. Well, this weeping can be interpreted in many ways. But especially it's a weeping of copious tears for our sins, as well as the sins of our family, the sins of our people the sins of our nation, the sins of our country, 
the sins of the world. Tears poured forth of sorrow for sin. It's a sign of our desire of reparation or repentance for the many sins that have hurt God. And it's a weeping of, of tears for our children. If the tears are not streaming down our cheeks, at least it's an interior weeping for many children, teenagers, young adults who have walked away from God. As a reading in Jeremiah and the prophets, they're, they're following false gods. They're following idols. And one of the best examples of the, someone who really lived this out would be that of St. Monica. St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. Her husband, Patricius. We read in that classical text, the Confessions, that Monica went to the bishop of M Milan and poured out her heart to the bishop. And she wept. And the Bishop of Milan says, a woman who's wept so many tears, her tears and her prayers will be heard. And as a result of the tears of Monica, tears streaming forth from her eyes and her heart. Her son was converted. St. Augustine was converted and became a Catholic. Her husband was converted be before he died. And even her gossipy mother-in-law was converted. Blessed are those who weep. They will be consoled. One last point on the this uh, beatitude. And this biblical phrase that we're commenting from Jeremiah. Let my stream with tears day and night without rest. Like to make a connection with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now one of the Marian apparitions that maybe you don't, you don't know too much about. It's Our Lady of La Salette. She appeared in the, in the 1800s, the mid-1800s, to two children who lived in the hill country in France, Melanie and Maximum. And you see a picture of her, or a statue of her. She's actually sitting down with a crown of her head, dressed in white. She has her head in her hands. And she's weeping, a lady of La Salette. And she revealed the reason for her tears. And they were for the sins of the people in France. And she mentioned three. First is that the people abandoned going to church. This is after the French Revolution, which devastated a good part of France. Second is that they would eat meat on Fridays. They knew that on Friday they had to make a sacrifice. In the church ecclesiastical discipline back in the 1840s and 50s was no meat on Friday. And the third was that the people would blaspheme, that they would curse God. So Our Lady was weeping. It's 
So in a certain sense, we can say that Our Lady is weeping today. For many reasons. For many people who have walked away from God. As Jeremiah is pointing out, follow, following false gods, following idols. That's the message of the prophets. Following false gods. And that's what idolatry is. The second is the shedding of innocent blood, innocent babies, so the practice of abortion, or being brutally murdered every day. This causes Mary to weep, causes the Lord to weep. She caused us to weep also. And lastly, the frontal attack against the family through the LGBT agenda trying to promote a false concept of sexuality, a false concept of the human person, a false concept of the gender of the person, a false definition of sexuality, which came out from the Supreme Court about two months ago. This is a frontal attack against the family. We know that studying history, when the family comes unraveled, then the society is in great danger. As John Paul II pointed out, the basic building block of society is the family. John Paul II said, the way the family goes is the way the society goes. Vatican II says that the family is the domestic church. So all these points can be part and parcel of your holy, your holy hour. So I just wanted to take that one verse from Jeremiah in which the prophet says, Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest. And finally, let's pray that we would have a humble and contrite heart weeping, and begging forgiveness for our sins as well as the sins of our family members. Sponsorial Psalm says, For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us deliver us. Just one comment on that. The second commandment is we're called to honor and respect the name of God and not only the name of God but that which represents God. That would be the saints and Mary. So we want to offer our tears in reparation for the statues of Unipra Sarah that have been torn down, for the images of Mary in Massachusetts, in other places that have been defaced and destroyed. For the churches, we got the San Gabriel mission, the churches that have been an object of arson. So when we say the name of God, it also refer refers to those who represent God, his saints, and especially the queen of all saints. 
and that would be the Blessed Virgin Mary. So the name of God is, is to be honored. Finally, my friends, uh, today we go through the parable we've already meditated upon on Sunday. It's the parable of the field and the weeds, where Jesus tells us about a man who had a field. He planted his seed, and his workers came up and said, Sir, didn't you plant the seed, but there are weeds that are growing up among your crop. What should we do? Should we pull up the weeds? And um, having studied this a little bit, I learned that there is a wheat, then there's cockle. Cockle. Cockle is false wheat, but it grows up alongside with the wheat and you can barely distinguish it. Only after it has grown up, the cockle right next to the wheat, you can see that it's thinner than the wheat. It's emaciated. So back in the Middle East, the time of Jesus, enemy, the enemy would actually sow the cockle among the wheat. And if the cockle grew among the wheat, the cockle would actually suffocate or asphyxiate the wheat crop so that the wheat crop could not grow. And if the wheat and the cockle were pulverized, that would be obviously a very bad, that would be very bad bread. Jesus is using this as an analogy for us. And basically Jesus is saying that we are called to be the wheat. You are called to be the light of the world. You're called to be the salt of the earth. You're called to be yesterday. You're called to be the yeast or the leaven in the loaf. In other words, you are called to sanctify the world within the world. Pope John Paul II wrote a document with the title Christi Fideli Laici. In that document, John Paul II challenges lay people. When I say lay people, those who are not priests and religious or nuns. Almost all of you are lay people. You're called to be, John Paul II says, you're called to be the light of the world, you're called to be the salt of the earth. Yes, you are. So you're called to be the wheat in the midst of the cockle and the weeds. And you're called to grow. You're called to flourish. You're called to abound. You're called to sanctify. You're called to be a source of conversion. Because you, you cannot escape, most of you cannot escape from the world and live in a cave. Or hide beneath your bed. You can't do that. You're of the world, but not of the world, Jesus says. You can't hide from the world but you're called to sanctify the world. And by your holiness of life, you can sanctify the environment. If you like an analogy, 
If you've got a pool at your house, to purify the water of the pool, you place chlorine. Chlorine is one of the chemical elements which is most efficacious to kill the bacteria that is present within your pool. You're called to be chlorine. You're, cl you're called to be salt. You're called to be light in the world in which you live. <clears throat> so allow the tears flow from my eyes like streams day and night. Jeremiah. Who lived that out and who really lived out being the wheat among the weeds? I just mentioned her. And that was St. Monica. St. Monica lived in an environment there was a lot of cockle, a lot of weeds, a sinful environment. Her husband was a drunk. Her husband was violent. Her husband was a womanizer. Her son Augustine was addicted to sex. Her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law was a chismosa, gossiper. So there you have the cockle in the middle of the family, the cockle. But Monica became the wheat. Monica became the salt. Monica became the light. Monica became the draino. Monica became the, the chlorine that you put in your pool. And her presence sanctified such that her husband Patricius was converted before he died. Her son Augustine was converted, became a, a priest, a bishop, and a great saint. One of the greatest intellectuals in the Catholic Church. And her mother-in-law, the Chismosa, she was also converted. So my friends, the word of God is very, very rich. So read through, meditate upon Jeremiah, meditate upon the Psalm, meditate upon the gospel. And pray also that you will be able to Recognize that even in the depths of our hearts, there's still some weeds that want to grow up and to choke up, to choke out the wheat in our heart. Still some of those weeds, they want to grow up. Let's ask the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary most holy, who never committed one sin at all that Mary will, through her prayers, help us to pull out those weeds so the flowers of God's holiness and purity and virtue can really grow in us. And we will be able to be the salt of the earth. We will be able to live out what Jesus says, you are the light of the world. So may God, may God bless you in a very special way. I'd like to give you my priestly blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in a very special way. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>